Welcome to Stamford Bridge. Behind me is a pub called the Butcher's Hook. Now this pub used to be known as the Rising Sun and all the way back in 1905, some gentlemen met here over a pint and formed Chelsea Football Club. Now, I'm in Fulham and as you can see over here, I'm on Fulham Road. Now Fulham are regarded as the local neighbours, closest rivals to Chelsea Football Club. But as most of you know, Chelsea Football Club is actually in Fulham. Now this ground has been here since 1877 and it was originally used by London Athletics Club. It was an athletics ground, it had a running pitch around it and all sorts. But people owning, running the ground wanted football here at Stamford Bridge. So they offered the ground to Fulham. Fulham turned it down for financial reasons. So some people decided, do you know what? We're gonna create our own club. And as we just mentioned, they did so over a point in that pub in 1905. Now today, guys, we're going to be here, as we do as always, at Rise Football Paradise, doing a stadium tour. We don't just do current modern stadiums. We do old, uh, neglected and abandoned stadiums too. We do other types of football nostalgia. So if you are new around here, make sure you do subscribe. And just, for, just to help you guys out, not because I'm sponsored by them, although I should be, because I'm spending enough bloody money with them, I've got a cracking car parking spot right here through just park. Look how bloody close it is to Stamford Bridge. You're never gonna get better parking than that in a busy part of London. Ladies and gents, let's get inside. Or oh, let's not get inside quite yet. Let's do our usual thing. Let's do our usual 360 tour. A bit of foreplay before the main event. You've got to warm up the oven before you stick in the turkey. Let's do our 360 tour around the outside of Stamford Bloody Bridge. Let's go. So behind me, guys, is your reception area. This is the kind of entrance way you think of when you think of Stamford Bridge, the main way in. I'm going to be honest with you, this first little walk into the ground did surprise me a little bit. I thought with Chelsea having a, a recent history of being financially very wealthy through Abramovich and more recently, maybe in not such a good way, uh, Bowley. I thought it'd look a little bit more grand and Chelsea-like. It's a very wealthy area of London and it's quite a modest entranceway to the stadium. Nothing wrong with it, but it speaks more of like a mid-table Premier League club than a big six club. But maybe that's what Chelsea have become recently. Sorry, Chelsea fans. We do speak normally positively about football clubs, so I'm sure there's going to be some great stuff coming. Behind me, guys, over there, is the mega store. Again, when we visit each and every one of these 20 Premier League stadiums, if you're new to the channel, we have to buy at least one item from the club shop. At the end of this series, we'll do a video going into detail on each and every item we've bought from every Premier League club shop. So what we're going to do, as the club shop's over there, we're going to do what we normally would, and that's do the 360, finishing up in the club shop. We went to Sheffield United, Bramall Lane, on the weekend, and we had to do the club shop first because it was raining. And it was raining on the way here, but the weather looks like it's going to hold off. So a bit of history on Chelsea, guys. Well, let's just, let's just do this outside the Peter Osgood statue, shall we? So for our younger viewers... Peter Osgood is generally, generally regarded as one of Chelsea's best ever players. I'm sure we'll mention him when we do the museum tour. Now, originally, there was kind of one main stand, and that was designed by Scottish architect, we always mention him, Archibald Leach. Now, Archibald Leach actually designed the stand that was pretty much a replica of the Stevenage Road stand in Fulham, the one we got all excited about, the pretty one, the main one you see when you enter Craven Cottage. Chelsea pretty much had a replica of that here at Stamford Bridge. Of course, Stamford Bridge has made many changes, or there's been many changes to the ground over the years, probably most notably in the 90s. Who remembers the car park that was behind the goal? Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. Now, I did a poll recently on the channel asking you, out of the four remaining stadiums, Stamford Bridge, the Amex, Brighton's ground, the city ground at Forest, and of course, Kenilworth Road, which were you most excited about? And this was actually bottom of the list. Understandably, Kenilworth Road was top. So I've not really delivered what you guys want going by that poll, but it's going to be a fun day. So behind me over here, we've got a couple of goal nets right outside the Matthew Harding stand. 
are these official Premier League goal posts, goal nets? That's one thing that's changed since the 90s and uh, previous to the 90s are the goal nets. How boring are the goal nets now? They're all the generic kind of box nets, plain white. Who remembers the quirky little patterns and colours you'd get on goal nets? The saggy looking nets when the ball would ripple in the back of the net. That's one thing I do miss uh, and don't quite like about modern football. There's loads I don't like about modern football, let's be honest. But the Matthew uh, Harden end here again. We talk about the grandeur, the classiness of the area. Um, but Stamford Bridge so far, I'll be honest with you, is looking a little bit tired. Considering they had years and years of investment from Abramovich probably not the most aesthetically pleasing of grounds so far this is probably the most negative i've ever been on royce football paradise i never slag things off sorry chelsea fans i don't mean to be so negative but we've got a positive over there because i can see a jam franco zola in the distance so we're getting a little bit of nostalgia on the go now so behind me guys is where we'll go in a moment for the tour but again let's crack on with that little bit of foreplay i'm getting absolutely drenched here by someone jet washing I won't go into too much of the history as I do this 360 because, again, the museum is going to kind of be the place to do that. But I have noticed, again, from, from going through the Matthew Harding stand, I've noticed more nods to Chelsea's history. I don't know if you can see in the background there, you've got the old Chelsea badge. Now, obviously, they had the CFC throughout the 90s and stuff, and the, the badge they currently have, which was introduced... Uh, at the start of the Abramovich era is the current badge is a nod to that badge you see over there a really nice badge I must admit I do like Chelsea's badge I know Villa come under stick for their change of badge this season being somewhat similar to Chelsea's oh <laughs> right I was hoping to be a little bit more positive but just look at that down there I mean grounds don't have to look nice do they but when you are regarded as a big six even is the big six even a thing anymore when you're regarded as, as, as a big six club uh, a giant of english football generally speaking you should probably have a ground that lives up to that and again the irony is being a man united fan old trafford's falling down so yeah i'm going to take that on the chin but probably not one of the most aesthetic after seeing the emirates and the emirates com coming under a lot of criticism for being a bit run down and old looking despite the fact that it's only been there since like 2006 Right, guys, I think we're going to be in trouble today. I've just had security come up to me from this end and said I'm not allowed to film. Chelsea don't want people, YouTubers and stuff, filming around the ground. And I can see why. Right, then, guys, I've got to stay a little bit under the radar because uh, security are hot on my tails. But that slightly unpretty side is the East Stand. And over here is the famous shed end. Now, we've got confirmation from the guy who whooped my ass at security that the Matthew Harden end is indeed where the car park was and the shed end is the opposite end. Right then guys, this is really nice. We're currently walking along like the wall outside the shed end, the shed end wall. You've got all kinds of nods to all famous Chelsea players. You've also got the badge I uh, spoke about. So obviously this is the one from 86 to 04. And the current badge is a nod to the one from 52 to 86. I must say, despite the slightly iffy start to this video, Chelsea do seem to be doing a little, a uh, few renovations to the ground, a little tidies up there's a uh, lots of cranes and things going on so maybe security are just a little bit conscious of that apparently they've had loads of youtubers here and maybe they've said similar things so they don't want people like me rocking up here and slagging it off until all the work's done which is fair enough you know chelsea spent enough on bloody players they can easily fork out a bit of money on tidying up stamford bridge Right then guys, I've, I've had to kind of reset myself for this video because everyone else has been really, really nice. The people in reception were like, I don't know why you said that, I don't know why you said you couldn't film because film wherever you want. 
and everyone has been lovely. I've even jumped on an earlier tour because the club shop doesn't open till 10. But what we're gonna do now, when we go upstairs, is the museum behind me. So I've got about 20 minutes to check out the museum. I think I'm gonna do that first, and if we miss anything, we can always come back, can't we, after the tour. But we, we mentioned about the lack of kind of history around the ground. I know we were spoiled outside the Emirates because it's just a, an abundance of Arsenal history. But everything is inside. Obviously, Arsenal didn't have, Arsenal did have a museum, but yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's just get in that museum, shall we? Guys, I've just asked the guy on reception whether I've got enough time. He said I should really come back because uh, it's going to take a long time. That just shows the history of Chelsea. If you can't get the museum done in 20 minutes, they've got a lot of history. And I'm really looking forward to learn about Chelsea. Obviously, I know all about everything from the Premier League era. I was born in 89, so very much grew up in the Premier League era. Behind me over here, though, you can see the shirts of the 2012 Champions League winning team. Now, again, I mentioned it at the, at the Emirates tour. A lot of people put Chelsea above Arsenal as London's biggest club. And I mean, in recent history, that's definitely true. Chelsea have won two Champions Leagues, almost won three, if it wasn't for John Terry slipping over, whereas Arsenal haven't won an actual European Cup. They won the Cup Winners' Cup. But obviously, Arsenal have a lot of history earlier on. They've got more uh, FA Cups and so on. Chelsea have obviously got five Premier League titles. So in terms of recent history, I think probably you could say that Within the Premier League era, Chelsea are the biggest London club. Chelsea, 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 Chelsea. Right guys, I'm going to be doing the Munich 2012 penalty challenge. You've got Frank Lampard, top left. Didier Drogba, bottom left. David Luiz, top right. Ashley Cole, bottom right. I'm going to go top in, I'm going to go top right, David Luiz. Here we go. Absolutely bloody awful. Yeah, I think I need uh, Frank Lampard's boots. Got the wrong shoes on, that's what it is. Anyway guys, we're gonna head back down, do the tour and finish up. We're not gonna finish up at the museum, we'll go to the museum, finish up in the club shop, and then we'll do a bit of a conclusion at the end. Stadium tour, let's go. <laughs> New mother. <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea. <laughs> already Stamford Bridge is the ninth largest Premier League stadium it's the 11th largest English football stadium so the guy just mentioned that those boxes over there the glass boxes with seats in front will set you back one million pounds very Chelsea I, must, I think I'm a special one Welcome to Stamford Bridge. So over here in the press conference room is where Jose Mourinho famously said, I am the special one. I, must, I think I'm a special one. Uh, 
Um, and Messi, very interesting, he's a great goal scorer, but he had quite a hard time scoring against Chelsea. And at Stamford Bridge, he only scored one goal. But that's still better than Ronaldo, who never scored here at Stamford Bridge. Never, ever. Never. <laughs> he scored against Chelsea, but he couldn't do it here at the stadium. So that's a really interesting fact. I did not know that Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, has never scored at Stamford Bridge. It's quite nice that they've actually acknowledged rivals. You've got the Spurs shirt behind, and obviously the legendary Georgie Best in the Fulham shirt. We went to Crystal Palace, Salhurst Park, and they had the Brighton shirt in the bin. No respect for their rivals. But Chelsea, very respectful. Loads of legend shirts. Obviously got Cruyff, Beckenbauer, Puskas, Eusebio, Bobby Moore over here. So then guys, we're just about to go down the tunnel, but I thought whilst we're here, I'd just say that even though the shirts are in order, Chelsea players can sit wherever they want, but Frank Lampard used to sit over in the corner over there. So that was, that was Lampard's spot. And out of all these players, all these expensive signings Chelsea have made, the best player, the best players, should I say, are the women's team over here. You've got Rhys James's sister, Sam Kerr who came runner-up in the Ballon d'Or. sat in the Chelsea dugout. This is where obviously the managers, subs and stuff would sit and this is the view they would have. One thing I forgot to mention as well that up there in the middle is where you'd get like the Sky Sports cameras, TNT cameras, etc. The overhanging ledges. So this is where the cameras would be obviously facing out onto the pitch that way. Right then guys, so for £2,000 you can have what they call the dugout experience. These seats over here right behind the dugout. That first seat over there apparently is the one that Pochettino likes to use. But there's not really a set seat for managers. But yeah, two grand guys can sit over there. Right, and guys, we always see those lights behind us. Every Premier League stadium has them. I think every Premier League we visited has them. It's artificial light because obviously in England we're limited on sunlight, as you can see today. Very grey, rainy. So that helps the grass grow. But with that said, only 95% of it is real grass. 5% of it is like a synthetic artificial grass. It seems to be like a hybrid thing. Most Premier League pitches have, clubs are adopting. So over there is the shed end, which is half to the left, the away fans. And the Matthew Harding, the other end, which is generally speaking, the louder kind of more traditional home Chelsea ends, like the Stretford end at Old Trafford, the whole end at Villa Park and so on. day when it was uh, kind of standing at the shed end this was more of like the, the Chelsea end 
but obviously developments and the fact that the away fans are over there has meant that most of the vocal Chelsea fans are more over that way. But this is a very historic stand. Uh, the original, I mean, the oldest stand is the one over there, the one we were earlier on. So that's the uh, tour over, guys. Now we're going to be taken to the club shop, where obviously we need to buy one item from the club shop. So let's get in that club shop, and I'm going to hold off what we're buying until the end of the video. Thanks very much, really enjoyed that, thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, you okay? Uh, this is uh, you can not make uh, video. Right guys, there's no point in me waiting to the end to show you what I got from the club shop, is there? Because uh, you can see it in the bag. When we went to Spurs, we got a Son soccer star. You know I've got a love for Corinthian figures, pro stars. Who remembers those from the 90s, early 2000s? We've got us a Reese James, probably the most identifiable Chelsea player. Obviously his sister plays for the women's team. And because I got a magnet at Craven Cottage, where I've put it in my mag cave, I'm going to put this next to it. It just seems fitting, doesn't it? As Chelsea's in Fulham and their, their local rivals and stuff. I feel bad because I was quite critical at the start of the video, but that, that security guard put me in a bit of a put me, put me in a little bit of a bad mood. What we're going to do now, guys, we're going to head over to the museum as we were earlier on, and we're going to have a proper look round the Chelsea Museum. Let's go. So just a reminder, guys, Ken Bates, when he bought the club, bought Chelsea for one bloody pound. I spoke to the tour guide, I asked why um, she was speaking about complications with extending the ground and reason being fans when Chelsea were going through their tough times actually invested in the club and essentially bailed them out. They own part of the pitch and apparently if Chelsea were to move grounds they would not be allowed to be called Chelsea Football Club. So there's a lot of complications there. Um, I just wonder, I thought why don't they do an Arsenal and just do move around the corner especially as they're not even in Chelsea, they're in Fulham. But no, plans are to extend the ground. Apparently part of Bowley's purchase of the club, the lady said for four and a half million, apparently part of that purchase was some of that money has got to go into the ground, Stamford Bridge. But we're back. Cool. By the way, I was saying to my, to my missus the other day how unfit I am at the moment. Those of you who know me know I'm off gained a little bit of weight. I'm looking a bit rough lately. Getting up them stairs was a trip. Getting up them stairs was tough. Let's get in that museum. <laughs> Guys, we mentioned earlier on that Archibald Leach designed one of the original stands, or maybe even the original stand, uh, and it was exactly the same as Fulham's Johnny Haynes stand, which is now, well, which was the Steamage Road stand. Look at that, Chelsea Football Club. What does that remind you of? On the side of the cottage, I think it is. You've got the Fulham Football Club right in. Very, very similar. Might have had nothing to do with Archibald Leach, but uh, similarities in between clubs. And if you wanted a, a little glimpse as to what Stamford Bridge used to be like, we've got a, a model over here, life-size model, and obviously what Stamford Bridge is currently like. Again, as we keep mentioning, originally the ground just had banks on three sides and only had one stand on the east side, the east stand. Again, that was designed by Archibald Leach, pretty much identical to the one at Craven Cottage. Now, the banks all around the outside, obviously you could fit a lot of people on those banks back then. There wasn't the same regulations as there is now. They did have the, the vision of hosting FA Cup finals there, which at the time were held at Salhurst Park, the home of Crystal Palace. So before Wembley, Chelsea was essentially the Wembley.
So Chelsea kind of come under criticism, similar to Man City, for the fact that they were bought and people say they bought their titles, their trophies. But Chelsea definitely had a history prior to the Abramovich purchase. Now, they'd won the first division title and they obviously won the, the now defunct Cup Winners Cup prior to Abramovich. Recently, as you know, they've won a couple of Champions Leagues and a Europa League. They're actually the first British team or English team to win the Europa League, the Champions League, the Cup Winners' Cup and the Super Cup. I'm trying to find out when it was that Chelsea moved on from the yellow, from the yellow socks. You've got here the, the little nods of the kit they had a few years back, uh, a bit of a throwback kit. I'm pretty sure Chelsea had yellow socks, not just as a one-off, they had them as their kit colour, didn't they, at one point? When we went to St James's Park, we made reference to the fact that Knight's sponsors were iconic. Obviously, the Nuki Brown Ale with Newcastle, Sharp with Man United, JVC with Arsenal. I don't know if you can quite say the same with Chelsea. You've got the, the Coors kit over there. They also had Auto Glass, Amiga, Commodore. There's some really good sponsors in the 90s. So, I mean, what the outside of Stamford Bridge was lacking, the inside has definitely made up. Very detailed inside. Maybe there's some ruling to do with the council why they can't, I don't, nah, that's, that's rubbish. There's loads of stuff though to look once you get inside Stamford Bridge. Not just in the museum, but just in the hallways, like where I am right now. Very, very good. I mean, who can remember Glenn Hoddle, his player manager days, obviously. Where is he? There's Glenn. He'd come from Swindon as a player manager the previous season and got Swindon Town. We were only like 45 minutes away from where I live in the Premier League. And obviously he went to Chelsea and then England. I mean, we could be here all day, guys. There's so many things I've missed out. I've probably not even touched the surface of Chelsea's history. But this isn't uh, necessarily a video. Obviously, I'm not a Chelsea fan. This isn't a video done by a Chelsea fan and I'm going to miss bits out. So make sure you Chelsea fans correct me if I make a mistake but also add some important information about Chelsea's history in the comments below. Let's go outside now and we'll do a little, one last look. I don't have to worry about annoying the security guard because we're going to be on our way home. So we're going to go back down the same way I got told off at because I almost want to correct myself. I mean, yes, the place is looking tired. You know that. It's probably the closest thing I'd compare it to in many aspects would be Goodison Park. But obviously the, the difference being Everton haven't had the massive financial investment that Chelsea have, both through Todd Bowley and through Abramovich. I'd have thought with all the money they spent on players, they might have spent a little bit more on the ground. I mean, just look at that behind me. I know no one sees it, and that's why they don't want nosy YouTubers like me mooching around, because they don't want a bad review online. But I think for the sake of the Chelsea fans, I'm doing this for the fans, doing it for, uh, for good intentions. Chelsea might spend the money, but they don't always spend it right. I mean, the aesthetics of a stadium aren't going to bring them results necessarily. But, as we've seen with Manchester United, it's all a, a collection, it's a combination of so many different things, isn't it? The Chelsea, the Chelsea stadium itself, for me, even internally, did look a little bit tired, did look a little bit old. There were, again, many ways in which I could compare it to Goodison Park, not just from the Archibald Leach connection, because Archibald Leach, a Scottish architect was uh, the designer to some of the stands at Goodison as well but I mean I might have been a little bit a little bit rude because if you look here there is memories of Chelsea's success especially in the in the Abramovich era you've got some of their iconic Premier League wins on the wall do you know what guys it was early morning and obviously after that encounter with Mr Mr Big Balls Mr. Know-it-all, Mr. Security, it put me in a bad mood. On second glance, it's not even that bad. When you look at it, this is nice. They've obviously tried to decorate the place with some good memories. And I'm sure on match day, fans would flock down here and it would look, it wouldn't, nothing would stand out as to being old and run down. I mean, little touchy, little classy things like 
like that, just to tidy up the place. It is an old ground. It's one of the oldest English grounds going. Was it 1877? That's a long bloody time. And Chelsea have been a football club, as we keep saying, since 1905. And with their restrictions, again, as we keep saying, they can't move. So I think I have been highly critical of the East Stand. You can see the reception behind the East Stand reception. I mean, what else can they do, really? The hypocrisy of it all when there's Old Trafford apparently falling down. So going by the fact that there's a Premier League trophy running alongside all these memories, I'm guessing this is a tribute to their five Premier League title wins. Again, a crack in touch. There's not many football stadiums, especially in England, that are going to live up to the amount of detail around the ground of the Emirates. That's why I felt like, I, I'd mentioned in the Emirates video, Arsenal were my least favourite club for many years. I've never, never, despite my loyalties elsewhere, never had a, a major dislike for Chelsea. Even when Mourinho rocked up and started smashing it, I never hated Chelsea despite being rivals. I've got respect for them. I think when everyone used to call them Chowski in those mid-2000s kind of years, we've kind of passed that right now. And it's showing at the moment that money doesn't necessarily bring a success. It wasn't just the Abramovich money. It was everything that was implemented within that era was, was top-notch because as soon as he went, you know, everything started to go to pot. Guys, oh, there it is. There's that little Chelsea football club nod. I've really enjoyed this. I did worry at the start, but you know what? It has been a fantastic tour, and partly because of the great people on the tours, in and around the ground, again, minus the one numpty, everyone's been really pleasant, and uh, credit to those. Shout out to the Chelsea staff. Well then, guys, we're going to wrap the video up by showing you this is where the match day store would be. You've got another Chelsea shop here behind me. You've got a couple of hotels, bars, a 1905 bar, again, because Chelsea were formed in 1905. It's been a really enjoyable video. I hope you've enjoyed it. That leaves us with just three more Premier League stadiums to visit. Nottingham Forest, Brighton, and Luton Town. Now, judging by that poll, Luton Town's the one you want to see most. I've mentioned before that they're not doing stadium tours at the moment. Getting tickets at Kenilworth Road is proven to be a bloody nightmare. So if you're watching this and a Luton fan and fancy helping us out with tickets, give me a shout. And also, if you want Rise Football Paradise at your club, your local club, and maybe you want to jump in on a video and show me around, drop us a DM on Instagram at Rise Footy Paradise. Ladies and gents, there's some videos to the side of me right now. Go and check those out. And this Friday, I'm going to be at Notts County. And whilst I'm there, we're going to have a wander around Nottingham Forest. Similar to Luton, they're not doing tours. But whilst we're there, just across the river, we'll check out Forest. I'll see you in one of these videos. See you, see you later.